Hi, this is Jack for iPokerVIP.net. Today I'm going to be making part four of the five part concept video series. And we're going to be talking about calling free bets and then how to play post flop in free bet pot without the initiative. So first of all, let's talk about why we want to call free bets. Um, generally, we only want to call free bets when we're in position. Uh, it's going to be hard to call free bets out of position and show a profit. So this video is going to be specifically tailored towards calling free bets when we're in the car from the button and uh, one of the blinds free bets us. Uh, so like a re-steal attempt. And the reasons why we want to do this, well, we're very exploitable if we fold too much. Uh, if we make it 3x, he makes it 9 more, so he makes like 10 big blinds total. He needs 67% fold equity there to show an immediate profit. So if we're folding more than that, if we're folding more than 67%, he's going to show an immediate profit free betting us with any two cards, even with hands like 7-2 offsuit, which is obviously, we don't want that. You know, we want to be able to, we want to be tough to play against. We don't want our opponent to just be able to free bet us with any two cards and show a profit. So we need to do, be defending more often than this. Uh, we need our fold equity, we need our fold to free bet to be lower than 67 in this spot um, so that he isn't showing a profit by, by re-raising there. However, when you think about it, um, very often we're going to call the free bet and he's going to be able to make a continuation bet and win the pot. Uh, additionally, even with a really, really terrible hand, he's going to have some equity, um, potentially quite a bit of equity versus some of our specific hands. Um, you know, a hand like 4-5 suited uh, is going to have a decent amount of equity versus a hand like king-queen offsuit. So um, we actually need to be defending a lot a lot more than 67% or, or we need to be folding a lot less than 67% and I think somewhere in the region of like 60% fold to free bet is what you should be aiming for. Um, obviously this is opponent dependent, you don't want to just go and like defend against nits with like a really weak range because you're going to get owned. But against regulars who are going to be tough to play against, who are probably going to be at, looking out of their HUD, seeing how often you're folding and probably going to be adjusting their range based on that, then you need to really be defending. Um, with, Like I said, I think your fold, fold, to four, fold to free bet should be like 60%. That'd be really good. Uh, and then you're quite unexploitable. There's, it's difficult for your opponent to just re-raise with like weak hands and show a profit. But at the same time, he kind of has to because otherwise his range is going to be really strong and he's not going to get any action when he when he does free bet like aces. Um Another reason, not just to, to talk about being exploitable, but in terms of our opponent's range, uh, he's really, really going to have a very strong hand if he's a, if he's a standard regular. Uh, Jack's plus is only 2% of hands. Yeah, ace-king and ace-queen are strong hands pre-flop, and he's going to be willing to shove over a 4-bet. Um, but once the flop comes and it's like low cards or just no, or he, you know, he just doesn't make a pair, um, then his hand really isn't that strong anymore, you know? Um, Ace King and Ace Queen on boards like seven five two Rainbow are just not they're obviously not very good hands, right? Any pairs ahead of them and they only have twenty five percent versus a pair. Um so basically his range is isn't gonna be that strong, even though it's strong pre flop, once the flop comes, if it's favourable for us or if it's not favorable for him at least, then his, his range really isn't going to be that strong. So therefore we can take it away on lots of flops and turns by floating the flop and then betting the turn when he checks. Um, additionally, we can actually make the best hand a lot. So with hands like 10-9 suited, um, we actually have quite a lot of equity versus free bet range, or at least enough to be able to call and see a flop. And then once we do see the flop, we're going to have enough equity con to continue a lot of the time. Um, finally, we've got very good pot odds to continue when he free bets. We've only got a call like, uh, you know, if he makes it 10 total, we've got to call seven more into a pot of, uh, you know, like 14 and a half big blinds. So we're getting we're getting a good price pre-flop to call, and then post-flop usually he's going to see that half pot, and again he's giving us a great price there because you know if the pot's twenty and he bets like eleven, he's giving us a price of eleven into thirty-one. We don't need much equity to be able to justify continuing, and um, essentially people play very straightforwardly in free bet pots. A lot of the time they're going to two barrel, they're going to see that like a lot, like you know eighty percent or whatever, and then they're only going to two barrel with their big hands, their big draws, the hands that they're willing to stack off with. And they're just going to check fold with like with their air or with their really weak showdown value. Um, so basically, uh, as we saw in uh, the floating video part two, um, we're going to be in a position where when, when our opponent's playing very straightforwardly and he's check folding a lot on the turn after checking, um, we don't actually need him to check the turn that much in order to show a huge profit by floating with any two cards. And in fact, a lot of the time, if we can manage to flop a gut shot or a flush draw, then we're going to have so much equity to continue anyway that we don't even need to worry about, uh, you know, we don't even need to worry about him check folding all the time. So let's look at a range that we could consider calling free bets with. Like I said, mostly we're going to be defending in the cutoff or the button versus re-steals from the blinds. Now this image on the left is 11% uh, of hands in poker stove. And if we think about our, our value for betting range, which is generally going to be jacks plus an ace king, 
Uh, four bet in ace queen is generally very, very bad when you're in position. Um, four bet in pocket tens or worse is also generally pretty bad unless you're against a really aggressive player who's shoving with like low pocket pairs or just five bet monkey bluffing with like ace five suited. Um, so if we're value four bet in with jacks plus an ace king, we're throwing in some four bet bluffs, another three percent of hands in total. Then this range is going to allow. Then this is going to allow us to defend seventy uh, percent of hands in total, either by four betting or by calling. Which means that if we're opening like fifty-five percent of hands on the button, uh, we're not going to really be exploitable to a free bet, um, and so we're going to be able to we're going to be able to you know be quite tough to play against. Obviously, if you're opening like seventy or eighty percent of hands on the button, you're going to have to defend more of the hands than this in order to not be exploited. But I don't think you should be opening that many hands anyway in in most games because the regulars are good enough to adjust. They're good enough to free bet. And uh, it's just going to, you're going to put yourself in too many difficult spots where you have to defend with a really weak range. Um, we can adjust the range depending on our opponent. If our opponent's especially good, then we obviously don't want to defend against free bets as much because we'd rather be exploited pre flop for a little bit of money than exploited post flop for a lot of money where he just totally owns us on the, you know, turns and rivers. Um, similarly, against nits, if someone's only free betting like 2 or 3% over like 500 hands, then obviously you know you don't need to defend because you can't outplay his range because his range is so strong. Uh, moving into our post flop strategy, a lot of the times it's going to revolve around floating. Obviously, we are going to make a good hand some of the time, um, but unpaired hold cards only make a pair thirty three percent of the time in holding, so the vast majority of the time we're going to miss, um, and we're going to have to float. Now, what the reason why we want to do this? Is essentially our opponent is going to see bet half pot a lot of the time. So, the, you know, he free bets to 10, we call uh, the pots like 20 going to the flop. He's going to see bet like 11 or 12. He's going to need us to fold about 33 to like 36% of the time there. So, if our focus see bet and free bet pots is any higher than that, then we're instantly being exploited. He can see bet any two cards against us and show a profit, which is bad. We don't want that. You know, on a lot of flops, you know, we don't want our opponents to just be able to automatically show a profit betting with total garbage against us. So, we need to be defending quite a lot. Additionally, our opponent won't actually hit that often on most flops where he C bets a lot. So let's take a typical, typical example. Uh, you, you can see I've opened Flopzilla here, which is a great program for this type of thing. I've uh, given our opponent a free betting range of tens plus and ace tens plus and ace queen plus, ace jack suited and king queen. That's his like distinct value range, which I think is common for a lot of players. And then he's got a lot of suit connectors and like ace five suited, which again I think is what should make up most people's uh, bluff free betting range. And that gives him about 9% total, which is, you know, what I, I think what most decent regulars will be free betting from the blinds versus the cut off or a button steal. Now, if we take a board like Ace 8 2 Rainbow, which is a flop that should typically hit our opponent's range quite hard as the pre flop free bet, you can see that he's only made top pair or better 31% of the time, um, which is not very often really when you think about it, especially considering that uh, if he C bets the flop and you call here, um, it's going to lot, look a lot like you've got some kind of hand with showdown value. So therefore, when he checks and you bet the turn, your turn bet is going to get a lot of credit because he's not going to expect you to bet like 8, 9 or pocket 10s on the turn. Um, so therefore, your range is going to be really heavily weighted towards ace-queen, ace-jack, ace-10 when he uh, when he c-bets you call and then you bet the turn after he checks. So therefore, you know, with all these hands, these, uh, some, these pocket pairs or like some uh, some weak pairs like 9-8, He's going to see bet a lot and then just give up on the turn. Additionally, he's uh, going to see bet and then usually give up with all his hands like uh, nine seven suited, unless he turns some kind of huge draw. Because uh, once you call this flop, your perceived range is contains a lot of ace x hands and a lot of hands that you know are, are going to continue on are going to continue on turns. We can change this and see on a king again, like you know, only twenty two percent of his hands make top pair or better. Um, same on like a queen, okay, twenty seven, slightly higher, but still, I mean. You know, even on a jack, like 25%. So pretty much, um, or the vast majority of the time on a lot of these boards, uh, he just hasn't hit it enough. Yeah, he's hit it sometimes. But when you think about it, the price that he's given us, if he's betting half pot and then just check folding the turn when he misses, which is what a lot, or check folding the turn if he's missed, which is what a lot of people would do, uh, we don't need to be able to win the pot very often to be able to justify floating. And you can see that um, I go through the maths here like I did in the part on, on floating earlier in the series. And we see that if our opponent is uh, if our opponent is um, going to check fold 80% of the time after checking the turn, which I think especially on those dry boards a lot of people would do, they'll either just two barrel for value or check and give up, and potentially check call cool with some of their like top pair weak kicker hands. Um, if he's check folding the turn 80% of the time after checking, 
we can go through the maths and essentially we see that he has to check the term 40% of the time. He has to two barrels more than 60% for us not to just be able to float profitably on those uh, on those Jack 82 Rainbow Queen 82 King 82. Even if you make it a flush draw, his hands you know he still hasn't really improved. He's just got a few few more flush draws. He's still going to give us a decent amount of credit when he when he C bets and then uh, we bet the turn. Um, so yeah, there's lots of spots where we can float float the flop with very little equity, and this calculation takes into the account having no equity. If we factored in the possibility of having like a flush draw with 10-8 suited, or having a gut shot, or having like backdoor straight backdoor flush draws, then these are gonna we're gonna need um, a lot less uh, fold equity, and a lot we're gonna be able to win the pot. We're gonna have to win the pot a lot less when we miss in order to be able to justify to being able to float. Basically, the, what I'm trying to get out from here should be obvious that we're going to be floating a lot in free bet pots and it's going to be very, very profitable. And I'll show you some hand histories here, um, after I've gone through the slides to really demonstrate why. So good spots to float essentially is going to be versus straightforward players who either check, who either barrel or check fold. Um, if we've got an opponent who check calls the turn a lot, it's going to really mess up the EV on our float. That was talked about in part two when I talked about floating. Um, is that if you you know, or at least when I talk about counting and floating, if you really want to counter someone who's floating floating you, then you're going to check the turn. And you're going to make him fire that big bet on the turn, and then you're going to throw in a check raise or just check call, and uh, you know he's going to it's going to have cost him a lot to have floated. Um, so if we're playing against a tricky opponent who's going to check call the turn with some good hands or just check raise all in with draws, then we really don't want to be floating as much against them because of the course um, we're actually risking our turn bet as well as our flop float. Whereas against a straightforward player who we know is just going to check fold almost all the time after checking, even though we have to bet the turn, it's not really a risk because he's going to be folding so much. Uh, dry boards are the best where a few turns change the board. So the boards that I showed you there, um, you know, these these boards like the Queen 8 2 Rainbow, even if like, you know, 8 5 2 Rainbow. 50% of his hands pass through the filter in terms of making like open ended straight draws and stuff. But there's still a decent chance that if the turns are blank, like the turns are free and he's got 9 7, he's probably just going to check fold anyway. Uh, if he's got like ace king, ace queen, he's still going to check fold on those type of turns as well. Um, but yeah, for the most part, like really dry boards where a few turns change the board are the best. So queen 6 4 or jack 3 2. And uh, you know, the reasons why those dry queen xx, jack xx boards are good. It's because you're going to have so many of those um, top pair hands in your range pre flop. You're going to have ace queen off, king queen off, queen jack, jack 10. Uh, the same with jack free 2 You're going to have king jack off, ace jack off. You're going to have so many combos of top pair hands. But once you call the flop there, it, there's going to be very few turns that he can like get you off of your hand on. He's mostly just going to check fold um, and play very straightforwardly. Obviously, we're going to adjust to our opponent if we've been. Uh, Floating versus someone the last few times, or if we've got caught, maybe floating and then bluffing the turn when our opponent's checked before, then we want to be a bit more straightforward. We can't um, we can't be trying to mess about with them every single time because they're they're going to adjust to us. So we need to adjust to them before they do that. It's better if he views us as as a straightforward and solid player. In terms of playing our value hands, we're either going to be raising the flop or shoving the turn if he two barrels, and uh, we want to talk about the reasons why we should do this. Um, Basically, if we're stacking off anyway, which is what's going to happen most of the time when we flop top pair in a free bet pot, then our only objective is to try and get it in when our opponent's range is the when our opponent's range is weakest. Now, basically, that is going to mean that raising the flop or shoving the turn is going to get it in against a weaker range because a lot of people will be prepared to uh, just shove flush draws or shove overcards if they think you're really spewy, or you know, shove with like uh, like top pair weak kicker because they can't get away from it. Um, they're going to do that a lot more on like the flop and turn than they are on the river. By the time they get to the river, not a lot of people are firing off three barrels. Not a lot of people are shoving like bet bet shoving for thin value. Um, so a lot of the times, by the get by the time he gets to the river, he's either going to just check fold with his air or check and decide with his value hands. Whereas like if you raise the flop, let's say he's got ace jack and you've got ace queen and the flop is like ace eight four. If he c bets and you raise, he's not getting away from that, right? So. Um, whereas if you call the flop, call the turn, then he might think, hold on, this guy might actually have a really strong hand, so I'm going to check the river and decide. And he might even talk himself into a check fold on the river. But he's certainly not going to fold the flop, because if you if the flop comes ace, eight, four, and he see bets and you raise, he's going to say to himself, what the hell, why is this guy raising? If he had like ace, king, he would four bet pre-flop. Um, if he had a set, he might even slow play it on this board, and it's unlikely he calls pre-flop with pocket fours anyways. He's not repping anything, so I'm not going to fold my ace, jack. Whereas when you, when you call the flop, call the turn, he's got to think, okay, 
right, this guy might be slow playing, or he might have ace queen or slow play ace king. There's not many hands I can get value from. Oh, I've got to check the river. Now he shoves. Well, he can't really have pocket tens now that he's shoved. He can't really have a bluff, so maybe I'm going to fold my ace jack. You know, that's the kind of thought process that people will go through, and that's why you want to be raising the turn, raising the flop or shoving the turn um, with, with your with your value hands before they have a chance to just, you know, before they have a chance to get monsters under the bed syndrome and get away from them. Uh, an example flop here of where people will fire two and give up. So let's say the flop is like queen six three and the turn is a ten. He's probably going to barrel king jack, ace to king, ace jack, jack nine uh, on that turn, obviously, because he's picked up a lot of equity. But once you call the flop and then call the turn, he's got to figure you for a hand like pocket tens, queen ten, ace queen, king queen, and he's probably not going to expect you to fold them on a blank river, so he's not going to shove any of his bluffs when he misses. However, he's obviously going to shove every single time he hits. So basically, if you call the turn on that, if you call that turn, then you're just basically letting him free roll. So it's better to shove or fold most of the time, and obviously you're going to fold with all your hands like pocket eights, pocket nines. But if you've got like ace queen or king queen on that turn, on that queen six three ten board, uh, and he bets the turn, it's much better to shove than just call again because you're just letting him free roll you. And there's a good chance that he's just going to spew call it off with like king jack or jack nine, even though he's not getting the correct odds versus your range. Um, because there's so much in the middle, and it, you know, once you shove the turn, it's almost like a, it's not a very big raise. Uh, he's getting great pot odds to call. Um, you're going to find that that's going to be a, a much more profitable line than calling the flop, calling the turn, and then deciding on the river. Because people just aren't going to fire off free in that spot, and you're going to get owned by the time that he shoves the river, because he's only going to have hands that beat you. Uh, now we're going to move into some hand history examples, and uh, I'm going to show you some uh, plays that I make where I uh, float the flop and look to try and take it away on the turn, and also some spots where I uh, shove the turn over a two-barrel um, rather than calling down. So this is the first hand I wanted to show you. Um, essentially, it folds to us on the button, and we open with Ace Ten suited. We get free bet by this guy um, Clarino, who's a regular. You can see he's playing twenty three eighteen. And if we open up his stats, it's free betting from the small blind thirteen percent versus a steal, um, and he's folded the four bets thirty six percent. So he's probably the type of guy who's free betting like his smaller pairs, looking to jam over a four bet. Um, maybe he's free betting with like Ace Jack. Planning uh, ace jack king queen planning to shove over a four bet as well. Um, basically, I'd, obviously, I don't want to I don't want to four bet this guy with ace ten because I'm not going to get the required fold equity, and it's a perfectly good hand to just go ahead and flat call with anyways. Flop comes king five two and he goes ahead and c bets. We can look at his stats and he c bets ninety four percent in a free bet pot. So if we look at flopzilla, now we don't know his range exactly, but if this is nine percent and he's free betting like. Uh, He's free bet thirteen percent. Maybe we can just throw in some more hands like this. Maybe throw in like uh, Ace Five off as well. That's like that's like thirteen percent now. Uh, that seems reasonable at least. And uh, actually, well, we said maybe he's free betting some smaller pairs. So maybe he's doing that instead of like instead of free betting that raggy Ace. Maybe he's free betting some smaller pairs. And the flops King Five Two with two clubs. Sorry, King of Hearts. And the ace and the ten is dead card, and so we can see that he's only made top pair or um, better. So top pair, over pair, set, flush draw, or, or flush draw, um, thirty-one percent of the time, which is not very often at all, uh, considering that when he bets this size on the on the flop, we're getting two and a half one, we're getting a two and a half to one pot odds to continue. We don't need to win this pot very very often at all on the turn to be able to show a profit here by calling, and if we think about it. When he c bets this board, uh, a lot of his hands that I've totally missed aren't going to really pick up any equity on a lot of turns. So therefore, he's not really going to be firing a two barrel very often. Um, additionally, a lot of our range for calling the flop is obviously going to be like king queen, king jack, king ten. Um, we're going to have a lot of combos of that, and even our hands like you know tens, nines, eights. Unless the unless the turn is unless the turn is a Broadway card, he can't reasonably expect us to necessarily fold those. He might think that we're going to peel twice. Um, Basically, this is going to be a great spot to float, so I go ahead and call. And now the turn is a seven of clubs. He goes ahead and checks. I think that if we're thinking about his range here, if he had a hand he wanted to stack off with, uh, it's much better for him to just bet again and try to get value from hands like nines with the nine of clubs, or try and get king jack to call again. Because if he checks here, and I've got you know, if I've got king jack, I might just check behind this turn. If I've got eights, nines, tens, I'm almost definitely checking behind this turn. Um, if I floated the flop with like ace queen with the ace of clubs, I'm probably just going to check behind this turn because it would really suck to get jammed on if I had a hand like that. So basically, it's a spot where 
Uh, it's much better for him to just two barrel again with any value hand, since uh, if he does have a flush or whatever, any hand that's going to bet call the turn is probably going to shove or at least call a turn bet anyways. Um, whereas some of the hands that will check back the turn will will call a turn bet again, such as you know king jack or like pocket nines with nine of clubs. Um, they're going to call a turn bet again, but might check back when checked to. So it makes much more sense for him to two barrel his strong hands. So therefore, when he checks, he's almost always got a weak hand, and probably the best hand in his range is going to be like queens with the queen of clubs, where he doesn't want to bet and get shoved on, be put in a tough spot. Doesn't want to bet because he's going to get called by king queen, king jack, etc. Um, so he just checks, trying to get to showdown. But I think that in general, I'm going to get enough folds here by just betting small, because most of the time he's just going to have a hand, uh, you know like uh, ace queen or just like eight nine just to, you know total miss um yeah i do have a little bit of showdown to check back but like i can make him fold some better hands I can make him fold ace queen if he's got pocket jacks with no club i think he's just going to check fold that so i think that i definitely get uh, enough folds even if he's got a hand like seven eight i think he has to just check fold this turn really um similarly as you know a small pair like threes or fours with no club he just has to check fold even threes and fours with a club it's not exactly a distinctly good spot to check call so i go ahead and fire a small bet you can see i'm only risking like 46 to win 98 so i don't even need this to work uh don't need this to work very often at all like uh i only need like 33 percent fold equity and i think i'm getting way more than that so uh it's definitely a good spot to fire and he goes ahead and folds um, I'll just find a couple more spots for us to look at as well. Okay, so uh, another hand here. We open queen 10 offsuit on the button, uh, playing heads up, and we get free bet uh, by this player who's free betting a lot, like 13% versus steal. So his range is pretty wide for sure. We already know from looking at Flopzilla how wide that sort of range looks. And um, queen 10 offsuit wouldn't usually be a defend if I was in six mats because my opening range on the button would be a lot tighter. But heads up, my opening range is obviously going to be like 80% of buttons, so I need to be defending wider than I was usually. So I, I kind of need to defend Queen 10 off here. I don't really have a choice, even though it's not a hand that obviously I love to call the free bet with. Flop comes King 9 2, and we flop, uh, so we flop a gut shot with um, uh, backdoor hearts as well. So we got a bit of equity on this flop, and he goes ahead and C bets. Now, if we look at his stats, it's free betting 13% and then C betting 80%. Uh, additionally, um, He's not only two barrel in the turn, 45%. So he's the type of player who's C-betting a lot and then just given up. Uh, again, if we open Flopzilla, and if we give him the same range, 13%, obviously we don't know it specifically, but I'd imagine that it's similar to this at least. Uh, and we look at the flop of um, King of Diamonds, Nine of Hearts, Two of Hearts. You can see that top pair or better, he's only got 25% of the time. Uh, although our whole cards are slightly different here so we need to account for that okay so he's only got top peril better 31 percent of the time with our with our dead cards um but what this means is still you know he's missed the flop the vast mass majority of the time uh he's just going to have total air or like a kind of weak draw and when i call here again you know i'm repping a lot of like king x hands you know king queen king jack king 10 i'm calling with king 10 off suit pre-flop because i have to because it's heads up so there's a lot of king x hands in my range um I doubt he'd expect me to just call on the flop with like ace jack. Uh, so the only draws I'm really going to have is like queen jack and queen 10 and, and jack 10. Uh, additionally, like nine x hands. If the turns are blank, he probably shouldn't expect me to fold those. So once the turn comes, um, there's a few draws in my range definitely that he could try to two barrel me off of. But most of the time, I think he's just going to check fold if he's not got anything and continue barreling if he does have something. Um, because like he just seems he seems like quite a straightforward type of player from looking at his stats. So I'll go ahead and call. And don't forget, of course, if the turns are jack, I mean, that gives him a lot of reason to two barrel with a hand like ace queen or ace 10. Uh, it also gives him a lot of reason to keep betting for value with like, you know, big hands. And I'm almost always stacking him when he's got a big hand because if he's got like uh, pocket aces and he bets the turn and, it, you know, the turns are jack, he bets and I shove. He has to call, right? Uh, any value hand, really, ace king, king queen. If he's got king queen and I shove a jack turn, he's got top pair of a gut shot. I don't think he can justify folding, considering if he bets this turn, uh, the pot. You know, if he if he was to bet a jack turn, you can see the pot's eighty. If he bets like forty five on the turn and I jam, it's only one hundred and twenty more into a pot of like a hundred. Uh, the pot would be like. I don't know, 300 when I jammed because it's going to be another 40 in it from him. So essentially, he, he's not going to be able to bet fold the turn for that if he's got a value hand. Uh, and he's going to barrel a jack with a lot of bluffs as well because they're going to pick up equity. As it is, the turns are blank. He goes ahead and checks. And like I said, there's no there's no reason for him to really check a strong hand here. If he's got a big hand, to just keep betting because all my hands are like 9, 8, 10, 9. They're just going to check back. 
uh, weak king like king 10 probably is going to check back with a lot of my draws as well he might just think i'm going to take a free card he doesn't want to let me he doesn't want to give me a free shot at like a flush draw here in a flush draw with a hand like pocket aces does he so it's much better for him to just go ahead and bet so when he checks i think his range is really really weak and uh i get i go ahead and bet and uh you know again making like a half pot bet I only need him to fold a third of the time to show a profit here or to break even at least and in reality i think he's going to be folding just an absolute ton more than that uh, and he goes ahead and folds and we pick up the pot so just wanted to move into a couple of hands where i shoved the turn over a two barrel um it's going to be the first one we open the cut off um with 10 9 suited we get free bet by this guy who's um free betting like 25 percent versus steel uh, so this is obviously a clear defend with 10-9 suited here. Uh, we have a lot of equity versus range. We're clearly being exploited if we fold this from after opening the cutoff. Um, and you know, just in general though, his range is so wide, I expect to be able to win at post-flop a lot. Flop comes Jack 10-70 um, I don't expect people to necessarily be C-betting this com with complete air, but obviously with the amount of times he's got ace-queen, ace-king, king-queen, um, you know, I have to go and call here, even if he's, you know, hands like King nine is probably just going to see that this flop, so I have to go ahead and call. Uh, turns a ten and he bets again, and I think that this is a spot where if I call, I've got ninety left on the river, and the pot's going to be like two hundred and thirty. So if the turn, if the river's like an offsuit two, is he really going to bluff shove for like, you know, if he's is he really, is he really going to bluff shove any missed draws on like an offsuit two river? Considering the price I'd be getting of like ninety dollars into two hundred and thirty, pretty unlikely. Or in fact, if he shoved the river, it'd be like ninety dollars into what three hundred and twenty. Don't think that he's going to be. Uh, I don't think that he's going to be shoving the river if it, if he bricks. That would just be totally suicidal. Considering like there's two flush draws and loads of straight draws on the board. So um, I think that if if I do call here, I'm just fr letting him free roll if he's got a draw because I don't expect to make any money when he misses and when he hits, he's obviously going to jam. Um, so therefore it's much better for me to jam now. Additionally, when I shove, um, I give him a really good price here. He only needs 22% to call it off. So if he's got a hand like aces, kings, queens, I think that he actually has to call just because he can put me on some draws. He can put me on like king, queen of clubs. Uh, he can put me on ace, queen of clubs. Um, he's probably going to assume that I'm raising the flop of sets and the straights. So unless I have like, and also two pair. So the only hand I'm really repping here by shoving is a 10 in terms of hands that beat aces, kings, queens. And you know, yeah, there's a few draws that I can definitely be jamming, jamming on the turn in his eyes. Um, so I think that he's definitely going to call it off of any value hand. And I think that he can even call it off with like ace, you know, if he's got the draw himself, I think he has to call it off as well. Um, but basically there's a spot where if I, if I just call, I'm letting him free roll on the river. Uh, whereas if I shove, He's calling it off of any value hand and he's probably calling it off with most draws as well just because he's getting a good price. Uh, he does call and he ends up having kings. And so he's probably going to shove that river anyway. But um, it's a spot where obviously I, I was much better off shoving the turn versus his overall range than calling again. Finally, wanted to show you a hand I open ace queen from the uh, button and the big blind free bets. He's got 13% free bet versus steal as well. Um, this is a clear call, obviously. And then we actually hit the flop. We've got ace, uh, ace queen on the ace five three. Uh, I could go ahead and raise here uh, because I don't expect him to just. I don't expect him to fold like ace jack, ace ten. But then there's not many turns where I expect him to fold that on either. Um, and additionally, this player's a little bit more aggressive. Fires a turn, but c bet like fifty eight percent of the time. And his free and his uh, c bet in a free bet pot in general is a little bit lower. So I think there's a decent chance that he might try to two barrel me here. Um, also, obviously, I'd be calling on the flop with all my floats all my like hands like you know jack 10 of hearts i definitely call on the flop versus most people here and so i don't want to just let him automatically be able to two barrel me um, off of those hands i want to be able to call and be able to call uh, um, and be able to have a hand on some turns otherwise he's just going to be able to adjust readjust to me floating him and just two barrel a lot so i'll go ahead and call and turns a nine and he two barrels again oh he two barrels anyway and i think again if i call here uh the pot is going to be like 210 go into the river and he's going to have 100 in stacks i don't think he's going to bluff shove if he's got a draw and it bricks i don't think he's going to bluff shove especially once i call here my range really looks like an ace it looks like i've got ace 10 ace jack ace queen and he's not going to expect me to fold that on a blank river so i'm making no money off of his bluffs if i just call here i'm just letting him free roll me if he's got ace king and the money's going in anyways because if he shoves the river i'm obviously going to call 
Um, so my best play is to shove the turn and hopefully he's going to call it off with Ace-Jack or Ace-10, or Ace putting me on a hand like Jack-10 of Hearts, which is shoving the turn, um, or putting me on a hand like 9-8 uh, of Diamonds, which is shoving the turn, you know, to try and get him off of Kings or something. Um, so essentially I expect, I think that shoving is a lot better than just calling again on the turn. He can obviously call it off with some worse hands like Ace-Jack and Ace-10. If he calls it off with Ace-King, it doesn't matter because he's if he, if he has Ace-King, he's shoving the river and I'm calling it anyway. And he could potentially like call it off with some draws as well if he's managed to make some kind of combo draw. Or even if he, you know, I don't know, even if he just spew calls off with like King-Queen of Hearts, then that's fine by me. At least I'm giving him the opportunity to make a mistake. Whereas if I flat call, I don't think he's going to make any mistakes on the river. I don't think he's going to just bluff shove a blank um, because he knows he's getting called so much. So I shove... Uh, he calls as it is. He has uh, ace king, so that's you know unfortunate. But I definitely think I made the right play. And against his actual hand, the money was going in anyway. But I think against his range overall, um, I do a lot better than just by calling the turn and calling the river. So I hope that this video has been educational. I hope that you've learned uh, a lot about calling free bets, and I hope that you're going to have more success uh, than you used to um, when you're when you're facing a free bet. I actually do pretty well uh, when I face a free bet. And it's last time I checked, I actually show a profit when I call free bets which is pretty good considering their range is obviously going to be a lot stronger than mine. But just goes to show it just goes to show you how easy it is to play in position, you know, you can call on the flop and look to take it away on the turn. You can put them in some really difficult spots and people are just going to play really straightforward against you kind of cuz they have to. I mean, when the pot's big um and the and they've got a bet big to win it, they can't really just goof around, you know. They've got to play pretty straightforwardly. Um with a wide range that means that they're going to have to check fold a lot. So yeah, I hope this video has been educational. Um, please leave any comments or suggestions and um, I'll definitely get back to you on that. This has been Jack for iPokerVIP.net. Take care, guys. See you.